Welcome to the Files Data. Sneakers, footwear intended originally for recreational and professional sporting, has become an integral element of the human fashion community. Two primary lineages of sneakers exist, the basketball sneaker and the skateboarding shoe. Both are derived from 18th century rubber sold footwear called plimsolls, kids shoes, made of rubber and canvas, were mass produced in 1917. These shoes were commonly referred to as sneakers, as when a wearer of the shoes walks, it is not within a sound wavelength perceptible to human ears. Also in 1917, Marky Converse invented a shoe for the increasing popular sport of basketball. He named these shoes Converse All-Stars. While technically these are the best-selling basketball shoes of all time, zero basketball players wear Converse All-Stars during National Basketball Association gameplay. In 1924 in Germany, brothers Rudolf and Adolf Dessler created the Dessler Brothers Shoe Factory. Later, Rudolf Dessler produced the brand Puma. The Puma shoe brand is named for a quick-footed South American mountain cat. The Adidas shoe brand is named for Adolf Dessler. Adolf and Rudolf Dessler were members of the Nationalist Socialist Party of Germany, commonly referred to as the Nazi Party. The brothers used their shoe factory to produce anti-tank missiles for the Nazi Party during World War II. Afterwards, despite the defeat of Adolf Hitler and the forces of the Axis, Adolf and Rudolf Dessler's companies continued making popular athletic shoes. Later, in 1966, Paul Van Doren started his own shoe company in California, a large territory in the United States of America. Although Van's shoes were intended to grip the slippery decks of yachts and schooners, the skaters in Southern California discovered that this level of grip worked just as well on the decks of a skateboard. After sponsoring Dogtown and Z-Boys skater, Stacy Peralta, Van's shoes hit their first big break when actor Sean Penn wore checkerboard Van's slip. Ons in the high school centric dramatic film Fast Times at Richmond High. Sean Penn's film character, Jeff Spickley, was a skateboarder and marijuana enthusiast who reflected the changing face of the Vans Shoes brand. In 1971, University of Oregon track star Philip Knight and his coach Bill Bowerman co founded Nike, named for the Greek god of victory. Bill Bowerman created the first rubber sold running sneaker using a waffle iron he borrowed from his wife. The waffle iron was rendered unusable for its normal high-calorie breakfast creation purpose. The quote waffle so lend quote was utilized in what became known as the 1972 moon shoe. This shoe's tread resembled footprints left by humans when they walk on the surface of their orbiting moon. The Nike swoosh logo was designed in 1971 by Carolyn Davidson, a graphic design student at Portland State University. She was paid $35. In 1983, Nike gave her shares of its stock and a diamond ring featuring the swoosh. Nike Shoes contacted young college athlete Michael Jordan in 1984 to create a custom Michael Jordan basketball shoe. At the time, Michael Jordan was a self-proclaimed, quote, Adidas nut, in a very unwise business move. The Adidas shoe company declined to sponsor Jordan instead of Nike. Michael Jordan's first custom shoe, the black and red Air Jordan 1 bread, was banned by the National Basketball Association for being too colorful. Each time Michael Jordan wore this Air Jordan shoe during gameplay, he was fined $5,000. But what's wrong with the coloring? This, uh, what, what, what rule do we violate here? Well, it doesn't have any white in it. Well, well neither does the NBA. <laughs> The span designation reportedly made the shoe all the more desirable from the standpoint of sneaker collectors. Nike capitalized on this desire, creating an advertisement based on the shoe's band status. An affinity for sporting footwear is not limited to the traditional subset of athletes. Comedian Jerry Seinfeld owns over 50 pairs of mint condition white sneakers, and is seen on his television program Seinfeld wearing each pair no more than a human handful of times. Religious cult members also occasionally identify as sneaker heads. On March 1, 1997, the unidentified flying object worshipping cult Heaven's Gate, purchased Nike Decade sneakers in bulk for $548.45. Members of Heaven's Gate believed their souls would soon board an extraterrestrial spacecraft following the path of the comet Hale-Bopp. 
In order to board this craft, members tied the laces to their Nike Decade sneakers before taking the human poison phenobarbital mixed with applesauce. Their 39 physical bodies were found by police. Nike shoes played a large role in establishing what is now known as the culture of sneaker heads, a moniker which implies a human brain filled with nearly exclusively sneaker-related knowledge, leaving less space for additional information. In 2005, the release of the Pigeon Dunks, a Nike collaboration with streetwear professional Jeff Staple, incited rioting and attempted armed robberies utilizing baseball bats and machetes. Criminals attempted to steal shoes from the 30 young people that camped outside the store for four days and were able to purchase the shoes. It seems as though there is an inversely proportional relationship between number of shoes produced and residual chaos on the part of quote sneakerheads unquote. The New York Post covered the riots, bringing public attention to the culture of violence associated with purchasing limited edition footwear. In 2006 artist Ari Sile Foreman created a sneaker that was a hybrid of the appearance of the Nike sneaker and the Newport menthol cigarette box. The shoes were released in extremely low quantities and the designer was sued by both Nike and Newport and forced to halt production. The Newport 100 sneakers can be found on resale websites for up to $1,000. The largest contemporary component of sneaker head culture is the line. Lines are the most integral part of the entire athletic shoe resale market, because without lines, resale would not take place. Limited production shoes often can only be purchased in physical locations, therefore, sneaker heads must leave their duplexes, studio apartments, and parents' homes in order to purchase limited production shoes, tents, thermal clothing and synthetic hand warmers in the winter months and various chair implements are often seen in the multiple day-long sneaker purchase line ceremonies. Reportedly, the sneakerhead's significant others and loved ones can often be seen in these lines accompanying the sneakerheads and displaying physical signs of depression, boredom, or dismay. Data transmission complete.